G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and you know something I've always found in my training journey is that I come to the science a bit late you know and usually I will figure things out with horses and figure out what works and what doesn't and then later on I'll be told oh yeah that well the scientists or the behaviorists or the therapists or whatever would say when you're doing that you are doing whatever and you know over the years I've had uh, a number of people at clinics that are either behaviorists or have a degree in uh, animal behavior or have some sort of mental health degree and they'll say oh yeah what you're doing with that horse there we call that titration or what you're doing there with that horse we call that um, oh what's the word successive approximation so all these these big words that uh, you know I I learned empirically and so empirically is not book learning empiric learning is through doing it learning and recently I have come across another scientific thing that really explains what I've been doing lately and, and so if you've been watching these videos for quite a while you would have seen that I've really got into working on connection with horses first connection before concepts working on building that relationship before trying to train them to do anything and recently I found out the the science behind why that works so well and it's a thing called polyvagal theory and so this is about the the autonomic nervous system of the horse or really any mammal but you know there's there's two nervous systems there's the parasympathetic nervous system which is basically the brake and slows things down and there is the the sympathetic nervous system which is the accelerator and speeds things up and up until you know here a while ago I was thinking there was only two and there's one on and one's on one's off but it's a little bit more complicated than that and a lot of times when I find stuff that's more complicated scientifically it makes things more complicated in my head but in this case it makes things a whole lot clearer in my head and so the parasympathetic nervous system the braking system there's two parts to that and it has to do with your vagus nerve so your vagus nerve is the the super highway between your gut your heart and your brain and the vagus nerve the, the, so there's two types of vagus nerve there's your ventral vagal complex which is the front complex and the dorsal vagal complex which is the back complex and each one of those is a break now the dorsal vagal complex complex the back one is like a, a handbrake or an emergency brake in a car and the front one which is like the regular brake in your car so it's not it's just used to slow things down you can be using it while you're going but it's you don't use the you only use it to slow things down it's not necessarily about stopping so that one in the back the dorsal vagal complex that is about immobility so if your horse is standing around I don't know if there's any horses oh so there's horses behind me here and they're not standing around they are now I don't know if you can see them but when horses are standing around either grazing dozing or laying down that dorsal vagal complex or that dorsal brake that emergency brake is is pulled on a bit okay it's pulled on a couple of clicks if that thing gets so so that brake is all about immobility about standing still and so if it's on softly it's when they're just standing around they don't know what they're doing out there those two are playing um, they're either standing around grazing standing around hanging with friends or laying down so it's pulled on lightly but it can get pulled on really tightly but that's when your horse goes into freeze mode okay that's called tonic immobility and they'll be standing still but they're actually in a high state of arousal they just got the brake slammed on it's almost like they got the accelerator and the brakes on at the same time it's got like their foot down the accelerator and they fall on the brake at the same time the other brake the ventral vagal complex is the is the social engagement system and that keeps everything slowed down because you've got that soft break on and if you guys have been watching for a while you would have seen and, and this is what this part of it this social engagement break is really the thing it's all about this connection stuff if you guys have been watching for a while you would have seen the story about the the mustang at the clinic in texas that hadn't slept and had to lay down in six years and lay down and slept for four hours at the clinic um, you would have seen video of the the um, barb stallions in Morocco to where when I we turn them loose you know they were quite pushy and antsy and bitey and all that sort of stuff with the handlers and when they turned them loose all those horses wanted to do was run around and look over the fence back to the barn 
because of their friends, but all they did with those horses was get their attention and let them, I didn't put any pressure on them, I attracted their attention, but when I got their attention, I let them know that I saw their attention come onto me. And so that's, that's that social engagement thing. I was telling them that I'm socially engaged with you, I see you, there's a, uh, professor of psychiatry at UCLA named Daniel Siegel who's written quite a few books and he talks about attunement so attunement is this social engagement engagement thing and attunement is he describes it as being seen being heard feeling felt and getting gotten okay being seen feeling heard being felt feeling felt and getting gotten it's about that so if you think about the Mustang he got felt, he got, he got seen. I said, yes, I see your concern. He laid in and asleep. Those Barb Stans in Morocco, they ended up eating out of my hand like they were little puppy dogs and quite a bit different from the way they were in the start. And if you've seen the video I've done recently here uh, with our broodmare that when you separate her from other horses, she becomes a zombie and walks up and down the fence doing this zombie-like thing. If you saw the changes in her too, and all of those changes were made about because I, all those changes were made about because I let that horse know that I was present and I was aware of what was going on with them and if they needed time to process stuff, I would wait for them. And I was telling them I saw those little tiny little things. And I, you know, I did a video here a while ago about that old Ray Hunt saying, they know when you know and they know when you don't. And the thing that they know that you know is you know what their eyes are doing, what their ears are doing, you see them and that's, that's that whole social engagement thing and that's what keeps things down real slow. So I know that's a lot of stuff right there but um, I just wanted to make you aware of that. I mean I, this is YouTube and no one watches long YouTube videos so I'm not going to go on, I'm not going to bang on for hours about this even though I could, it's a pretty complex subject but it, that little bit of science right there explains why all of those horses that I just talked about, the Mustang, the Barbs, the mare out here, all of those horses acted completely different after a while, a lot more relaxed because I engaged that social engagement break. So if there's, if there's one piece of advice I could leave you with right here, I really want you to think about, if you can let your horse know, if you can get your horse to, to feel seen feel heard, feel felt and get gotten, you'd be amazed at the difference in their behavior. So uh, I hope that helps and we'll see you guys next time.